Hi, it's Ruben and Polly from Madewells. We are wedding photographers based in the French Alps. So today, we are going to show you where you should have a cheese tower cake on your wedding in the French Alps. We are going to meet Michelle and Tamsin, wedding caterers based here in Mosin. Hello. Hello. Who are going to share with us everything you need to know about it and show us the process of making a big cheese tower cake that will wow your alpine wedding guests. We are a catering duo. We mainly do alpine weddings. The idea is that it replaces um, a traditional wedding cake, yeah. but it's made of cheese. We're in the land of cheese. Uh, French Alps. They look beautiful, they yeah. taste beautiful, they're very practical, they're cost effective. Yeah, and um, it's a great statement, isn't it? It does mm. look fantastic. So it doesn't always replace the sweet, people still have wedding cakes, but this works really well because it's an amazing focal point for your day. Yeah. You get some amazing photographs of it. It's very rustic and natural, which is what you're in the French Alps for. Is it something French? Traditionally in France, they would have a pièce montée, and sometimes that's like a croque en bouche, mm. or it is a it's a big statement piece for your wedding. It is more sort of the the profiteroles and bits and pieces like that. So for us, this is just our take on that. And then what we particularly like about it is um, invariably they're used in the evening as part of your evening buffet. So once all the pictures are taken, everyone's had their fill of their sit down meal or whatever the occasion is this will come back into the kitchen and we will break it down in turn slice it up serve it with lots of fresh fruit and homemade chutneys different breads and crackers and it then it equally goes the next day lots of people have traveled over from abroad so you might be having a barbecue the next day that fills the gap there and then you can take it home with you and go back to wherever you live and a hard cheese freezes very very well so that can go back into your freezer, a bit like the old British tradition of, of saving the top tier of a wedding cake for the <laughs> next year. You, you can equally do this um, with this type of cake. So we use just French cheese yeah. and mainly just Alpine cheeses as well. We've got an amazing supplier down in Tamsin's village of Labio and they're a family um, that make all their yeah. own cheeses, so um, we get all that from them. So um, this, the we start with our base, which comes from a very good friend of ours, is a tree surgeon, so he supplies us with these, so whenever we need some, he chops a tree down for us. <laughs> <laughs> it's more it. environmentally yeah. friendly than that, it yeah. really is. <laughs> An offshoot of that, but we just oil it, so we oil it with um, olive oil and then we're ready to go. So. Yeah. And it's winter, so we've gone for a winter theme today. This is my recycled Christmas tree. To begin with, we literally just start making the base look pretty or interesting. This is our second lump of wood. Pop that there. A lot of it is just about making sure that everything is really super solid. We haven't dropped one yet, yeah. but it could happen kind of hard some days <laughs> and a hot August wedding. And then here we've got the raclette, which is a proper mountain yep. cheese. So, good place there. Morzine Slate. Before skiing came along, Morzine Slate was here, so the uh, Ardoise Valley, so up towards Prodan, they mine it there still yeah. to this day. So what we do try and do when we make these is try and make everything quite local. So it's everything's got a reference point back to where we are whether it's the wood, the slate, the cheese, us, we're Ooh. still here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you get quite a lot of different types of toms. When we're doing these, what we look for, obviously the type of cheese is really important, but we like all the different contrasts in the rinds. So this is a nice one to just start with. Uh, what we tend to do is build it up first, and then once we've got something that's solid, then we start filling it with flowers or plants or whatever it is we've got around. And we can work with uh, the brides and grooms on their colour schemes. Invariably we know the florists that they're using so yeah. they very kindly give us um, all their offcuts that are left over from the decorations and we'll combine that in so then we can tie the whole thing in so or whatever. All the colours match. Yeah. Is this your idea or you got inspiration from somewhere else? These are pretty much our ideas. I think when you're new to doing something, you have to have a reference point. So we started working out what looked good, what didn't look good. For me, 
It was weird to see people eat cheese for a dessert. The French eat it uh, straight yeah. after the main course and would have yeah. it with a green salad and it finishes your meal. Therefore desserts are sort of like high, high occasions and special occasions. Yeah. And in England they do the reverse do the other way and around. so you would have your dessert and then your cheese, cheese and have it with port. This is about the only layer we ever seriously argue about. I like things to be round. Michelle goes off piste a little bit every now and again. So today I'm going to humour her and I'm letting her use the triangles. Yes. And this is a bondon, so this is super famous from where we live. A really traditional Osawa, very, very regional cheese from here. Cow. Beautiful a bondon's cow and they come from the valley literally just over there. This is another tom. This is the ash or the, it's just the rind, the rind of the cheese. Um, but you know, it is, it's, it's wonderfully tactile and I think looks fantastic. And certainly if you've come from anywhere other than around here, you've probably never seen cheese never that, seen. that looks like that, to be fair. Where's Michelle? <laughs> Real life has kicked in, Michelle's off to do a delivery. Yeah. Hold on, you might want to wait, she will be back. Is that more cheese? <laughs> layer after layer of cheese. So, yeah, it's, it's just only the round blue ones cheese. they do, so. Secure it. Yes, secure it. So all we do is make sure that everything is in. We know this bottom bit is completely stable. It's from here to here that you might start getting worried about. So. That way around. Yeah. This is a petit ton. And this is a masquerading one because that is a petit basque, so that is not an alpine cheese, but it's yeah. so deep and it's very, yeah. very tasty. We improvise and, uh, hey, we're working mums, we can do anything. <laughs> and when, yeah, and essentially when we talk to people, we sort of say to them, we get an idea of what it is that they want, but essentially it's cheese. I'm not going to say it's a living thing, but you can't be too prescriptive with it. You'll, we'll get an idea, we show people examples of things that we've done before, but it's quite natural. This size would easy do 100 plus. Oh, easy, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. easy, absolutely, absolutely. Now, just in case anyone didn't think we weren't in the market for romance, we have our piece de resistance. It's beautiful, isn't it? And if that doesn't say love, yeah. I don't know what does. <laughs> If it is to be dismantled for a proper cheese buffet afterwards, we would get more soft cheeses in, but we don't necessarily use them in the tower because it's just too... It's too dangerous, essentially. Yeah, so, you know, we would we do get blues in and soft goat cheese and stuff, yeah. and, and they would be put on the platter as well. This is the magic, the love. We do the decoration. We go for the decoration. As I say, it's winter, so we've gone and gone foliage and bits and pieces from our gardens. Uh, you've got to be quite careful with what you put near food, obviously if you're eating it. And the ivy and the stuff that we use, we get floristry ivy, it's waxed, so it's completely safe to go near food. So, and then we literally just start. We are hoarders pretty much where, where, where it's somewhere and we see something, whether it's a nice piece of ribbon or what have you, we literally just take it with us. Yeah, you know, some people do like doing things themselves and that's absolutely fine. But the number one reason I'd say don't make this for yourself on your wedding days, you are going to absolutely stink of cheese. <laughs> there is no doubt about it. Your first dance, you do not want to be holding your new husband's or wife's waist or neck stinking of a bond Yeah. <laughs> no, there's, there's no nice way to say it, it's not pleasant. Like I said, we've got some really good suppliers now over the years, so we can have access to these big cheeses, you know, the, the supermarket has much smaller sizes which don't always stack up no. so well. I think people that decide to get married in the Alps are of a definite frame of mind. There's something about the atmosphere of the Alps that is a, a lot more low-key. Do you make also normal cakes? Normal cakes. Sweet ones, yes. I think about two winters ago we had to deliver a wedding cake up to the Linderay. It was uh, what we call a naked wedding cake, so very much like this, towered up with flowers and fruit, but it was sweet, it was a sponge. So we made it in advance, got all the um, icing and everything done, and then loaded up the backpack, <laughs> went up the Ardon bubble, 
did the most careful snowplow I have ever done to the venue and then uh, brought it up for the bride and groom so that was dramatic. You've skied a, a properly iced cake to yeah. someone for their... That was last year wasn't it, the birthday cake at yeah. the top of our, um, a Boreas, so that was quite nerve wracking. Yeah. He was a pilot so it had these aeroplane things hanging off it and clouds, it was very elaborate. How have you got that now? Well that's when I got on the chairlift and I realised I couldn't actually shut the chairlift. <laughs> yes, we adapt. <laughs> right menu and the right clients, we there is literally go anywhere. Yeah. We did a croc and bouche style cake, it was a hot, hot summer and it was beginning to, to get a bit of a wobble on it. We tried everything and in the end the only thing to do was we just positioned the manager, James from the farmhouse, we positioned him <laughs> behind it. And he literally not held moved. it up. And it was cropped <laughs> and we had the photos <laughs> taken and then it came. But it, it tasted delicious, that's the whole point. They, they have to be edible, you know, food photography, most of that food is unedible because it's been glued and everything. Our stuff is real. They, you know, once it's come in, we dismantle it, you eat it, and it has to be, it has to be eat well. So, uh, voila, here we go. Here is a, a Bonac cheese tower. <laughs> oh, don't laugh too much. Sorry, <laughs> that's been off the table. So yes, all the way from the Morsi, French out, hope so yeah. Hope you enjoyed this episode. And get some inspiration maybe for your wedding. Stay tuned, watch more videos we do, get some tips, subscribe and see you soon.